This man was the general who guarded the frontier, had killed countless enemies. Every time he went to the battlefield he was the pioneer, the one who scared the enemy the most. I can't believe this will be my last match. The victorious general returned, shouting and shouting incessantly, but when he approached the city, he was stopped by the soldiers. Traitor Kim Shin, take off your armor. How dare you say that? The king's order was uncontested, and Kim Shin did not resist. The soldiers behind him took off all their armor, but the general did not forgive him, not only asked Kim Shin to confess on his knees, but also ordered the men to bow to them. Faced with his soldiers, Kim Shin, who was furious, drew his sword and wanted to go to the emperor, thus angering the general, immediately ordered the soldiers to shoot at them. Everyone could not believe that he had been fighting for his country for three days and three nights, now he was betrayed by his own people. Now that the gates of the city were finally open, the emperor ordered Kim Shin to enter. Inside the station, full of soldiers, the person standing on the radio was Kim Shin's sister. This is surely God's plan. He tried to use his sister to stop Kim Shin, but he was wrong. Although his sister stopped passing by, she did not stop him, on the contrary, she believed in him. When Kim Shin moved on, the emperor immediately panicked, so he gave the order, betraying Kim Shin to destroy the Han family. This is my order, your sister fell to the ground with an arrow, and Kim Shin didn't stop. But next came his family, the women in the palace who had fallen one by one. Until the old people and children appeared, Kim Shin stopped, stopped, the wall of the victorious army finally fell. They also blamed God for the injustice. God gave him his last order and immediately killed him. In an emergency, Kim Shin pushed the soldier away. He did not allow himself to die under the king's orders. Immediately called his subordinates, gave the last order, told the subordinates to see themselves off. Even though I can't help but listen to orders. This was also the last time he was loyal to the general. Before she left Kim Shin looked at her sister behind her, who was still not out of breath. Unpleasantly, in his eyes, until tears fell, Kim Shin left in hatred. After Kim Shin died, the emperor dumped his body in the wilderness. I order no one to bury you. A hero finally dies on his own sword. Many years later, the servants in my house still come here to worship. Maybe it was his intention that moved the heavens. The old sword suddenly had a very strange phenomenon. In the sky, it seemed to be the sound of the gods. According to the thunderbolt, General Kim Shin was also resurrected. Moreover, there was the possibility of immortality. But to be immortal there must be a great price to pay, because his soul died so much under his sword, that he had to keep it in his chest forever. He had to use this immortal body to watch each of his relatives die. But Kim Shin still had more important things to do. Many years ago, Kim Shin returned to the imperial palace again, finding the delinquent that year had killed his family. When he saw Kim Shin, he was stunned, then strangely attracted to Kim Shin's side, eventually having his neck broken by Kim Shin. Despite paying this defense, Kim Shin arrived a step late. The old emperor is no more, I am late. Upon returning to Kim Shin to receive his first punishment, the valet who had guarded his side for years passed away, leaving behind only his six-year-old nephew. The servant who left a will wanted his nephew to take his place at Kim Shin's side, so Kim Shin took the boy with him to exile in another country, but unexpectedly the boat they boarded was full of pirates. When the boat reaches the middle of the sea they reveal their true face, they capture the boy threatening Kim Shin to surrender all his property. Kim Shin gave them a chance to be good people, but they did not appreciate it, even throwing the boy into the sea. Seeing that Kim Shin had no reaction, the choosers threw their swords at him. Just at this moment Kim Shin slowly stood up, declaring death to the pirates. You will face the wrath of the gods. The whole boat swayed violently, the hull directly crumbled. The pirates seemed to be aware of Kim Shin's rage. They finally understood that the man in front of them was not a person, a goblin. Just as the ship was about to sink into the sea, Kim Shin took out his sword and tried his last rage on the boat. A thousand years later, Kim Shin returns to his former homeland, once a general, now an uncle. He sent off his butler several times, also helping the butler's descendants become famous tycoons there. Every time you send someone close to you away, it is a very painful punishment for you. Kim Shin couldn't bear such a miserable life anymore. He couldn't stop thinking about how to draw the sword on himself. It was at this moment that he met his new bride. This is the toughest man I've ever met. He just appeared and hit a car. The car was smashed to pieces, but he was unharmed. The driver was about to get angry when the man walked up to him, remembering that he had just hit a pig. Saying that the boy immediately disappeared into the air, the passerby noticed an accident and immediately got out of the car to ask. At this moment, the back moved to a tragic scream. The passerby discovered a body in the back of his car, causing the girl next to him to collapse in fear. Wang Sok Jung was 25 years old, born April 3, 1973 died February 1, 1998, of suffocation. It turned out that the mysterious boy was the messenger of hell. You came here to take this girl. Each time he sent his soul away in his office. Hell's messenger handed a cup of tea to the girl. 
If you drink this cup of tea, you will forget all the memories in this life. I have been seriously working for over a thousand years. There's never been a mistake. When you are finished, you rush to get it done. But at the same time, the demon Kim Shin came here. Goblins? Love your head. Your hat is so ugly. Kim Shin is the one who signed the soul contract with the gods, not only making him immortal, but also able to interfere with the life and death of humanity. Coincidentally, today while drinking beer suddenly heard a woman's cry, it turned out that not far away there was an accident. The driver, after hitting the woman, ran away, but no one came to her rescue. She could only lie in the snow praying that someone would come to save her, because there was a life in her stomach. Despite hearing her prayers, Kim Shin hesitated for a long time, he didn't like to worry about how much he could cover. Until he heard a weak heartbeat, he finally softened. He jumped down and walked next to the woman, seeing that the god had appeared, the woman lost consciousness. Kim Shin also helps her regain her life, until the messenger of hell arrives to see only blood on the ground. The person who had to die now could not be seen, surely the child in that woman's stomach was not normal. At the moment the baby was born, there were many souls behind. Over the past nine years, the grown-up girl has become a very beautiful girl, she often sees strange things. There was a dog over there, and the mother was worried, but she didn't expose it. Until Un Tok's ninth birthday, she happily lights candles on the cake, but when the smoke from the candle rises through the mother's body, you realize that you are just a soul. It turned out that just a few minutes ago, the mother was in a car accident and died shortly after. Her soul returned here because she loved her daughter so much. Un Tok tried to suppress her feelings. But tears still flowed on her cheeks, the mother told her daughter, very cold night remember to wear more towels to warm. After taking good care of herself, Un Tok also tells her mother to go to a good place. The mother also nodded her head, finally disappearing in front of me, mom, the hospital also called at this time. Un Tok also wears a scarf and prepares to go to the hospital, but unexpectedly, death stands outside the door. You just saw him and recognized him. She hurriedly turned around and wanted to escape, but Wang Yo wanted to take Un Tok away. In fact, she was never born, and that year her pregnant mother was involved in an accident. Death has the task of collecting souls, but somehow misses their mother and son. This led to them being lost for nine years. If I find her today, I won't let her go. At that moment, the store owner ran over and let her go. It turned out that after her mother died, she came to this old woman, she told her the number she had lost. Please take care of your little girl. When he finished, the mother's soul disappeared. The old woman told her to go behind her back, the god of death won't take Un Tok away, I'll come look for her again, girl. After death had left, the old woman told the girl to move within three days. She wiped her tears and gave her a cabbage. As time went by like lightning, Un Tok was now an adult. All these years, my life at home has been miserable. Her aunt is a lazy eater, not only swallowing Un Tok's rent but also taking care of Un Tok's mother's insurance, even treating her as a servant. When she was about to go out, she threw a bowl at her head to prevent her from carrying her umbrella. Un Tok was helplessly soaking in the rain to go to school. Un Tok's life at school is not easy, because she can see spirits, so she is often isolated by her friends. This made her a monster at school. This girl was on her way home from school when suddenly a spirit appeared behind her. You're an evil sorcerer, god damn it, I knew you'd see me. But all of a sudden, the girl who seemed to have seen something frightening rushed away, and Un Tok felt very puzzled. She couldn't think of anything that could frighten a soul so much. It turned out that the man was Kim Shin. You just pass each other by. That moment seemed to have a flash of light. Kim Shin saw a vision of the future. But the scene was so vague that I didn't pay much attention. I can't believe this is the woman I've been looking for for years. Un Tok alone brings cake to the beach. It's your birthday? When I was younger, I never had a birthday. Because your birthday is your mother's day. This makes you even more sad. When I was nine, my mother left me. This is my 10th lonely birthday. Un Tok lights a candle and makes a wish for the age of 19. The first thing I wanted to do was find a job. The second is to punish my aunt. The most important thing is to find a rich boyfriend. Strangely, Kim Shin also heard her wish. After wishing Un Tok blew out the candles, he at Kim Shin had been standing behind her with flowers. Un Tok sees him suddenly and is terrified, and Kim Shin wonders why he is here. He asked Un Tok if she had called me or not. Un Tok also finds this man very strange. Perhaps it was God's messenger sent to help her. So I told him my three wishes. Kim Shin thought for a moment and then told her, she would quickly leave her aunt's house. Furthermore, after getting a job at a fried chicken shop, Un Tok was silent for a while, and was about to ask her future boyfriend if he was handsome, when Kim Shin left. Only Un Tok stood there alone watching his shadow. The next day Un Tok goes everywhere looking for work, but searches for a long time but no one will accept her. You're very angry and you're clearly saying that you're going to fulfill your wish. 
At this time, the rubbish pile next to it suddenly caught fire. She hurried to put out the fire, pouring water and blowing. But unexpectedly Kim Shin appeared next to her. Un Tak saw him rush to reproach. But Kim Shin was still curious as to how Un Tak could call him so easily. Un Tak also considers herself a beauty. Kim Shin turned around and left. Un Tak then recalled two occasions when Kim Shin suddenly appeared. She found out that she could just blow out the candles to summon Kim Shin. So you're going to try. Un Tak opened the app and blew out the candles in her phone. Unexpectedly, Kim Shin appeared preparing to leave Un Tak and took his hand, at the same time a strange blue fire suddenly burst into flames. To Kim Shin's surprise, this girl was able to touch him without any damage. Un Tak then discovers that this uncle is neither a spirit nor a messenger of hell, so there is only one person left, which is the goblin. She told Kim Shin that she was the goblin's new bride, because from childhood to adulthood all the spirits around her called her that. After saying that and showing Kim Shin the birthmark on the back of his neck, Kim Shin found the birthmark extremely surprising, because this girl was the one he accidentally saved 19 years ago. Can you really be the new bride you've been looking for so long? So Kim Shin asks if she can see the sword on him, but Un Tak says no. Kim Shin heard that disappointingly left, he didn't want to continue wasting time. When he left Kim Shin to open a door, Un Tak hurried after him. This made Kim Shin very surprised, because this was a door that was not magical. They travel from Korea to Canada, where Un Tak is delighted. She was happy to walk everywhere, and praised him very strongly. You decide right away, I love you. Kim Shin fell in love at that moment. She was the first woman to confess to him in thousands of years. Is this girl really my new wife? After returning home, Kim Shin asked the god of death to confirm it for him. But you are not available. This is weird. Why can't even death do that? How could Un Tak? Un Tak is now being scolded by her aunt. It turned out that her cousin had seen her Canadian passport. Un Tak wanted to escape to Canada with insurance money. Un Tak couldn't help but escape. You walk alone on the street. Un Tak just waits until her aunt falls asleep before sneaking home. On the other hand, Kim Shin was thinking about why Un Tak might not be with him, but didn't see the sword on his body. So he took the initiative to go to Un Tak, but she was very sad right now and wasn't in the mood to pay attention to him. Kim Shin just went for a walk with her to help Un Tak release her emotions, but coincidentally this scene was discovered by her classmates. She thought Un Tak was a sugar baby and took a photograph of her phone as evidence, but the door next door suddenly opened, causing her lungs to explode. As Un Tak walks toward the car, she is terrified, and the next day Un Tak finds a job that suits her. The mistress is not only beautiful but also very kind, seeing Un Tak is difficult, she immediately recruited Un Tak to do it. That night, wanting to thank Kim Shin for his help, Un Tak blew out the candles again. I found a job, but I didn't expect Kim Shin to be eating steak appearing in this manner made him feel very embarrassed. Tomorrow, if he was still wearing clothes, he would die. After returning home, Kim Shin recalled the scene that was so confused that he could not sleep. The god of death had reached the end, not only disturbed by Kim Shin, but he was also raised up in the middle of the night to give him a successor. As a result, he could not sleep that night, and the next morning death could not stand it anymore. He is determined to warn Kim Shin, who knows nothing and is drowning in joy last night. At that moment Wang Yo sang a goblin folk song, the goblin's underwear was solid, even if you pulled it. Kim Shin fainted for three days and three nights, because it was a children's song, the content was very silly. This is Kim Shin's only weakness, as he starts to panic when his feelings are disturbed, affecting the whole city. This girl blew out the candle to the goblin, did not expect the person to come back as death, death came here to take her away. And when he tries to kill her, Kim Shin appears, Un Tak is scared, but her first reaction is to run to cover Kim Shin's eyes. She was afraid that if he looked into the eyes of death, she would be taken away, but she didn't know that Kim Shin's power was stronger than death. I'm not afraid of death at all. Kim Shin pulled Un Tak behind him. No one is allowed to take the girl who is about to become the bride of the goblin, and when she withdraws her words from the sky, she thunders. Death knew this was a sign that the goblins were angry, and it seemed that my mission today had failed. Wang Yo had to leave helplessly. Kim Shin tells Un Tak to quickly move house, and Death will surely watch over her from tomorrow, and tell her not to take him after this, for she is not the bride he seeks. I'm about to leave this place, I'm going to find my bride again. Un Tak's aunt is also lazy and owes a large amount of money. The creditor grabbed her collar and made her pay for it. In order to protect herself, she said that all the money was in Un Tak's place. So the creditor came looking for Un Tak, forcing her to get in the car. In the car, they dumped all their bags, wanting to find that money. It was at this moment that Un Tak saw the driver turning on the light. She wanted to go ahead and blow the fire to help the goblins, but they pulled them back. The creditor lost all patience and prepared to move his hand with Un Tak. The moment of emergency suddenly lit up the birthmark on the back of her neck. Kim Shin sensed her plea for help. 
Suddenly the car stopped, the lights on both sides of the road burned out. Two handsome men walked out. Soon a blue sword cut through the car. Kim Shin is so cute. He threw the sword in his hand. He took Eun Tak's towel and graciously wrapped it for her. At this time, the two thugs who were pinned down in the car could not move. Death came to erase their memories. After handling Kim Shin wanted Eun Tak to be less afraid so he took her out to eat hot pot. Although Eun Tak is grateful that he saved his life. But outside my mouth I said I don't want to bother you anymore. She said she wanted to leave but wrote five words on her face. Quickly holding me back, Kim Shin suddenly found out that she was also a little cute and went to the housekeeper to give the documents she had investigated to Kim Shin. That year, Eun Tak's mother died in an accident and received $5 billion in compensation. This is why her aunt agreed to adopt her. Hearing Eun Tak's life is so hard. In addition to Kim Shin's anger, he also decided to punish her aunt's family. Her aunt, who had searched Eun Tak's locker for the compensation money, didn't expect to find two gold bars. This also sent the family to prison. They brought two gold bars to the pawn shop to exchange for cash. Seeing their family's cunning face made the boss think it was a steal. He immediately called the police. At the police station she said this was her granddaughter's thing and she was the guardian so she had the right to use it. But when the police asked her for her niece's name, she couldn't remember anything. It turned out that the gods of death had erased their family's memories of Un Tak, so they were given the privacy of a few days in prison. In order to find the goblin's bride, Kim Shin bids farewell to death. Hopefully after you leave, death won't take Eun Tak away, and you two hate each other like cats and dogs. But now feeling sad, Kim Shin went to Eun Tak. I'm going to tell you that you have to take good care of yourself. She tried to calm down, but inside she was crying like a river. She had no place to go and now she was saying goodbye to her uncle. Why is life so unfair to her, which thought that the love of two people stopped here? Eun Tak came looking for Kim Shin. Did I see something on my body to prove that I'm your bride? Saying that she pointed to Kim Shin's chest, a sword suddenly appeared. After Kim Shin finds out Eun Tak's true identity, she falls into a dilemma. He had been looking for the bride for 1000 years to draw the sword, but once the sword was drawn they would leave each other. Kim Shin is extremely conflicted, he begins to hide from Eun Tak. This makes Eun Tak know nothing very painful. I thought my uncle didn't like me. She couldn't bear to blow out Kim Shin's refractory candle, but he couldn't explain to her his condition. To cheer her up, the two went shopping together, then had a few drinks together. As a result of Kim Shin getting drunk, he was about to tell her about the sword but the words to his mouth stopped. The next day two people came to the restaurant, the staff came to welcome them. This book makes you see the future of both of you. Ten years later Eun Tak is still sitting in this restaurant. She had cut her hair short, but the one she was waiting for wasn't him anymore. He also understood now that this sword would definitely be drawn. Your demon destiny will end, too. Eun Tak has no memory of you. Live a life that belongs to you. His tears could not be held back and fell. On the bridge this girl introduced death to a hairpin. Then she picked up the mirror. The light reflected in his eyes made him close his eyes. When he opened his eyes, he was stunned, until he wanted to pick it up and was taken over by another girl. Wait until he saw the opponent's face clearly. Suddenly tears came out, not that he was crying. Death hastily wiped away his tears to hide his embarrassment. The girl said her name was Sunny, but the god of death spoke another name, Sion Hie, while the two doubted. No one noticed the figure of an old woman in the mirror after death returned home. Looking at Sunny's phone number, he fell into thought, as usual I will take a kiss to say hello, who this girl is after all, why does he have such a feeling? In the days that followed, death would go to the bridge every day to wait, but Doc Wa never saw Sunny again and asked him what Sunny looked like. She is very open, my name is Sunny, her hair is like that, and her mouth is like that. Likewise, seeing the angry god of death, Doc Wa hurriedly runs away, Sunny's appearance making the god of death look forward to every day. Even when he walked down the street, everyone looked like Sunny, fortunately they met again on the bridge. Sunny blames you for not contacting me. You. I have waited for you for a long time now I'm going to give you a call. Where are you going? I have to get home and call you. His response made Sunny lose her voice. The two of them found a coffee shop to sit down and talk. Tell me true. Have you forgotten my name? Sion Hie is Sunny, not Sion Hie. What are you looking at me for? I had to do something. Every time you laugh. But when Sunny asked what his name was, he was dumbfounded. I can't believe you don't know what your name is. She asked my name, but I couldn't remember mine. I'm already dead, so how can I answer? The girl holding the hand of death. At this very moment, he accidentally saw her past life. In her previous life, she looked exactly like Kim Shin's sister, and they were wearing the same ring. The scene of her previous life suddenly appeared in his mind. Wang Yo was very suspicious of who this girl in front of her was and what she had done to her. The first time he encountered Sunny, he could not hold back tears, seeing the image of Kim Shin's sister in the same way, it seemed that Sunny was Kim Shin's sister after reincarnation. So who was your previous life? 
In order to find out the truth, the god of death arranged to meet Sunny again and borrowed her ring. He went back to ask Kim Shin about his sister. Kim Shin fell back into the memories of a thousand years ago, that year when the emperor was afflicted with illness. In anticipation of General Kim Shin's betrayal, the emperor ordered Kim Shin's sister to marry the new king. Kim Shin agreed, not expecting his loyalty to kill his sister. The new king ascended to the throne, the god of the world also gave a satisfied smile. If I cannot become a king, then I will myself create a new king and raise him, making the whole world submit to the king's feet. And that prince will bow down at my feet, and then the whole world will bow down at my feet. His sister went like that into a dangerous place, under the fascination of the gods. The new king took the title of governor of Bien Quang to exile Kim Shin. Kim Shin did his best to protect Bien Quang, finally winning the battle to return, becoming a god in the eyes of the world. But when they were about to enter the imperial palace, the soldiers stopped the general, and Kim Shin did not resist. But the general did not forgive him, not only asked Kim Shin to kneel down and confess, but also ordered the young palace soldiers to their side. Faced with his soldiers Kim Shin was furious and pulled out his sword to meet the emperor. As a result, the general was outraged and immediately ordered the soldiers to shoot at them. Everyone could not believe that he was fighting for his country, now he was betrayed by his own people. Now that the gates of the city were finally open, his majesty ordered Kim Shin to enter. Inside the station, full of soldiers, the one standing on the radio was Kim Shin's sister, the empress. This is surely God's plan. He tried to use his sister to stop Kim Shin, but he was wrong. Although his sister stopped passing by, she did not stop him, on the contrary, she believed in him. When Kim Shin stepped forward, the emperor was immediately afraid, ordering the killing of Kim Shin's family. Death asked to hold the girl's hand. He wanted to see Sunny's past life again, but she asked him what his true identity was. I see you didn't answer me. Sunny misunderstood that even his name was something he didn't want to tell her. I also lost all patience with you. Let's break up and not contact again. Kim Shin found the god of death depressed and sat down with him. After a moment's hesitation, Death finally spoke of Sonny's past life. Sonny's face in his previous life was exactly the same as the girl in his painting, Kim Shin immediately became serious. You ask what Death sees? Death continued to speak, standing in the middle of the palace, wearing a white dress that looked very dignified, being hit by an arrow in the heart. Kim Shin then asked what else he saw, sitting in the palanquin not knowing who she was laughing at. Through the window on the palanquin, she smiled and asked, am I beautiful today? There was a voice that answered her question, not pretty, was it really your sister? Kim Shin was stunned when he heard that his sister, whom he had been looking for for hundreds of years, was always by his side. Kim Shin hurried to Sunny's store, seeing Sunny he couldn't help but hugging her, the god of death immediately pulled Kim Shin back. He explains to Sunny that the man is her older brother from a previous life, but Sunny does not believe him and kicks them out. The next day, Kim Shin brought her favorite items from her previous life to meet Sunny. Sunny is extremely helpless, which is coincidentally seen by Eun Tak. She misunderstands that Kim Shin likes Sunny. Kim Shin has to leave. Eun Tak goes to Doc Wa to ask him about this. Since your mistress is his past life sister, how do you know that? And you want to know a secret? Death only needs to touch someone's hand to see their past life. So Eun Tak takes Sunny to their home, and Kim Shin takes out a portrait of her sister. As Sunny opened the painting, it seemed that her memory appeared something. On this man's chest was a sword. The goblin's bride wanted to help him pull out his sword. The moment the sword was about to be drawn, Kim Shin couldn't stand the pain of pushing Eun Tak away. Just as Eun Tak is about to crash into the car, Kim Shin rushes to embrace her. As a result, the two of them hit a car together, because Kim Shin's power was too great to cause several cars nearby to shatter. Eun Tak doesn't know that once she pulls out the sword, Kim Shin will disappear from this world forever. Eun Tak was so scared that she fainted, and when she woke up, her first words were, you're okay, let me ask you this. Faced with such a kind-hearted girl, Kim Shin's eyes were red, he was still not well prepared to leave. After causing an accident, Kim Shin calls Doc Wa to solve it. He immediately used the power of their corporation, deleted all the videos, then Doc Wa invited the god of death to accompany him to the site of the accident, compensated each person 3 billion, then erased the memories of the witnesses. The car is sabotaged by the wind, money falls from the sky a lot, Eun Tak goes to the god of death, asking him about the sword. Why was Kim Shin in such pain when she drew her sword? The god of death couldn't bear for Kim Shin to disappear so he told Eun Tak the truth. Once you pull out the sword, he will completely vanish. This fact makes Eun Tak unable to accept. It turned out that her fate was the end of the goblin's life. You are deeply saddened by this truth. So Eun Tak decides to leave Kim Shin, walking on the street, suddenly pouring rain. She remembered every moment of being with Kim Shin. She finally understood why he always looked so sad and desperate. 
It turns out that he is prepared to leave at any moment, and the god of death tells Kim Shin that Eun Tak already knows the truth about the sword. Are you crazy? I don't want you to die. Kim Shin searches for Eun Tak everywhere, but fails to find her, as he begins to turn the world upside down. He created an extremely thick mist and a blood moon, and burned the birth certificate that brought the dead back to life. All kinds of strange things that happened were posted on the front page every day. He did it because he wanted Eun Tak to notice him. Doc Wa said Eun Tak has no money and can only ride in a coach after leaving the house, so he won't be able to get very far. You start using your relationship. Soon, Kim Shin finds out Eun Tak is working at a ski resort. Kim Shin wanted to take her home but she refused. She didn't want to see Kim Shin disappear. She decided to treat him like a stranger, but she didn't know that if she didn't pull out her sword, she would always be in danger. Eun Tak also faints at the warehouse store, and at the same time, the god of death receives a notice to pick up Eun Tak, as if someone wants her dead. This is God's plan. We had an hour, hurry up, after Kim Shin heard the news and ran to the ski resort, but she was nowhere to be found looking for every little corner. Eun Tak's life is very fragile at the moment. Her mind is full of images of herself with Kim Shin. She silently summons Kim Shin in her head. I love you. Suddenly the lights went out. Kim Shin felt Eun Tak's breath. Then a blue light appeared. Kim Shin hugged her tightly to his lap. Eun Tak is finally saved, but when she wakes up again, she sees a doctor in front of her. Did you say anyone had a match or lighter? On the cable car Eun Tak blows a match. But the strange thing is that Kim Shin did not appear. She thought that Kim Shin would not appear again. Her eyes immediately frowned. It turned out that Kim Shin was waiting for her at the other end. After this death and resurrection, Eun Tak also changed his mind. She thought that as long as she didn't pull out her sword, she would be with Kim Shin for the rest of her life. But he did not tell her the consequences of not pulling out the sword. This treacherous old man is the same villain who 900 years ago was strangled by Kim Shin. Eun Tak tried to suppress her fear, saying that today the store closed, and she was able to drive him away. But soon he appears in front of Eun Tak, and tells Eun Tak about the past life of the god of death. He was the king who inserted the sword into Kim Shin's chest 900 years ago. The sword above Kim Shin was inserted by Wang Yo. Do you know who Wang Yo is with now? Wang Yo is now with Kim Shin. God's people cannot be reincarnated after death. He's been searching hard for 1000 years. Because he wanted to find the bride to pull the sword from Kim Shin's chest to end his immortality. After learning the truth Eun Tak immediately goes looking for Kim Shin. She tells him this, so Eun Tak doesn't get hurt. Kim Shin went to meet the god of the ark. Just like 900 years ago, Kim Shin squeezed his neck pressed it against the wall, then pulled out his sword to slash a line. But what he didn't expect was that Park Jung Hyun told Kim Shin, the god of death who was by his side that year, that Kim Shin had rushed home, but he couldn't find Wang Yo. So he went to his sister's restaurant, from her eyes he knew the answer. Unexpectedly over the next 1000 years, his sister still loved the man who had hurt her. Kim Shin finally meets Wang Yo in the palace 1000 years ago, the two enemies finally meet again after 1000 years. Kim Shin had been walking towards death for a thousand years, and this time he finally stood before the king. General Kim Shin visited his majesty, one thousand years ago Kim Shin did not die in battle, but he died under the sword he used to protect the fatherland. The past was unfolding before his eyes, but Kim Shin finally chose to let go. Park Jong Hyun suddenly appears to attack Sunny, Eun Tak using his body to protect her. The mark on her neck had saved the two of them, and this time the mark on the back of her neck had completely disappeared. This also means that in the future she will no longer be protected by the soul. The next day, Wang Yo receives a death notice and writes Eun Tak's name. Wang Yo immediately goes to Kim Shin, telling him when and where Eun Tak will die for him. Kim Shin didn't hate him either, he just hated that the king had killed his sister that year. Suddenly Kim Shin's chest tingled, and he knew that if he wanted to kill Park Jong Hyun, he would have to use the sword that was stuck on his chest, even if he did so, he would die. But to protect his family, there was no other way. Eun Tak is still unaware of the imminent danger. Park Jong Hyun's soul has found her, because the imprint has disappeared so she can't see Park Jong Hyun at all. While hanging the hair, she pulled out a lighter, then blew out the fire, a blue light appeared. Kim Shin appears here, Eun Tak suddenly understands why Park Jong Hyun has been hiding for hundreds of years. It turned out that he was waiting for the mark on her neck to turn his eyes, without a protective mark. Park Jong Hyun could easily take over her body, he wanted to use my body to draw his sword. Stab me, while you were hesitating, Park Jong Hyun took over Eun Tak's body, who should have killed her. And as he was about to pull out his sword, suddenly a familiar sound rang out. Park Jong Hyun, let your soul listen to my summons, Eun Tak also fainted, because in order to protect the girl you love, Kim Shin decided to endlessly reconcile with Park Jong Hyun. He took Eun Tak's hand, slowly pulled out the sword in his chest, 
A cry rang out. The sword was pulled out. Kim Shin immediately turned to slash Park Jong Hyun. Park Jong Hyun immediately dispersed, and Kim Shin was about to leave, and Eun Tak wept and hugged him. I said I won't let go of your hand, I promised you. I will turn into the first snow, I will pray to the gods. Kim Shin hugged Eun Tak's face. Then slowly closing his eyes, his body also gradually turned into smoke. The goblin kept disappearing in the air, leaving his bride in despair. At this moment, a flash of grasping passed. All the memories related to goblins were wiped out by the gods. The words he had written, the book he had turned over, and the moments he had spent with Eun Tak, were all erased. The memory of Kim Shin gradually became more dreamy. Eun Tak hurriedly took out the notebook and wrote down Kim Shin's name. I don't want to forget this guy, I don't know how long he's been gone. Kim Shin's soul wandered in the snow, that white butterfly appeared again, it was the god that governed everything. I told Kim Shin that the punishment for him was over, it was time to reincarnate. But Kim Shin always remembered Eun Tak. He knelt down and begged God to let him reincarnate. He wants to wait until Eun Tak recovers his memory. Then summon me. Kim Shin walked across the vast desert. He still clutched the paper he had promised Eun Tak. We'll see you in the snow next season. His eyes blinked for nine years. Eun Tak has now become a writer at a TV station. Every time it rains, you feel great pain and sadness. She often cried in the middle of the night. She did not understand why she was so sad. There was another snowy season. Eun Tak is also celebrating her 29th birthday. She falls into thought with a cake in her hand, finally forgetting something. Forgetting a face, forgetting a vow, to cause me such pain and despair. At the moment she blew out the candles, Kim Shin who was lying on the snow also felt her summons. There was a white smoke that he had not seen in a long time. Just like when he was first summoned by Eun Tak, Kim Shin was finally able to meet Eun Tak again. But now you don't remember who you are. Kim Shin hurriedly hugged his daughter every night, unexpectedly being pushed away by Eun Tak. I don't remember who you were then turned around and left. Kim Shin goes to Doc Wa's agency, but Doc Wa doesn't remember him, because his memories have been erased. It seemed that he had never appeared in their world, but fortunately there was one person who remembered him. That's death. You can come back well. It turned out that year after Kim Shin disappeared, the gods couldn't bear to let him be forgotten by everyone. So he kept the memory of death alone. Kim Shin was once again with the god of death. When the two resolve their grievances from a previous life, Eun Tak suddenly receives a letter from Canada. Looking at the contents of the letter, Eun Tak was amazed. She has never been abroad, nor does she have a passport. Why did you get the letter you wrote in Canada 10 years ago? To find out, Eun Tak immediately boarded the earliest flight to Canada to search for the truth. When she arrived at the hotel, the employee told her that the letter should have been sent 10 years ago, but was unexpectedly stuck in the mailbox. Only recently was someone discovered, so after 10 years of being sent away, Eun Tak walks the streets, looking at the scenery around. You have a very familiar feeling. When she passed a jewelry stand, the old woman said to her. The necklace she wore around her neck was the infusion 10 years ago that a man had asked her to make. The necklace meant that the fate of heaven had been arranged. Eun Tak sounded even more suspicious. Did you really come here 10 years ago? By the time she walked through the door, the familiar scene made her stop walking. At this moment Kim Shin opened the door and walked out, pretending to meet her by chance, then invited her to dinner. They went to the restaurant again last time. Kim Shin looked at the scene in front of his eyes and smiled. It turns out that nine years ago, the person he saw next to Eun Tak was himself. In the evening Eun Tak picks up a maple leaf, and suddenly some memories come to mind. If you catch the falling maple leaf, you will be with the person you are. At this moment, the memory that Eun Tak forgot finally appeared. She couldn't wait to meet Kim Shin, the man she always missed. I miss you, where are you? Kim Shin pulled her back from behind, then placed a kiss on her lips. The two suffering people are finally together, but life will not be so good for them. After returning to Eun Tak country to meet death, he is also glad that she has recovered her memory. But he quickly realized that Eun Tak had just turned 29 this year, the number of accidents. He had a bad feeling about her, a van with a missing brake, rushing straight toward parents picking up their kids from school. Eun Tak drives just in time to see this scene, and the honest Eun Tak finally chooses to break. You want to trade your life for the lives of your children. Unfortunately, the car crashed towards Eun Tak. Eun Tak was looking up at the sky, saying goodbye to Kim Shin. I love you. The spirit from a distance could see everything, and he could not hold back his tears. The death card with the children's names on it also disappeared. Instead of Eun Tak's name, Eun Tak's soul stood on the side of the road. Looking at the children unharmed, she also felt somewhat comforted. Death confirmed his identity to Eun Tak, who had sent off countless souls, but this time made him cry so hard. Death took Eun Tak to her tea room, where she asked him if he had four lives and how many lives I had, her first. Eun Tak hears the smile, suddenly Kim Shin pushes the door in, 
watching her soul make him unable to hold back tears. He hugged her tightly, not wanting to give up so easily. Un Tak comforts me, I'll see you again, just wait for me. Kim Shin nodded like a child, and the god of death handed her a glass of water. Un Tak shakes her head again, she doesn't want to forget her memories with Kim Shin, then goes alone to the path of connecting with the afterlife. After Un Tak leaves, Kim Shin wears her scarf, day by day waiting for his bride to appear. Today Kim Shin was sitting in front of the tombstone as usual, suddenly a girl with dandelion flowers appeared. I found him, the girl at the best age of her life. She slowly walked towards Kim Shin's side, Uncle, do you know who I am? The first is also the last, the bride of the goblin. Finally the lone goblin wandered for years waiting for his bride. The two of them went to the field every year, performed a simple wedding. This time they would hold hands happily for the rest of their lives. The movie ends here. Take 3 seconds to subscribe to the channel to support us. Thank you for watching our channel. See you all in the next movie. Today's session has come to an end. Thank you for following along. Goodbye for now and see you again soon.